Savannah, five weeks later, uh, has that gone quickly or has it gone slowly? Flew. Absolutely flew. At the time, I thought they said it's been pushed back five weeks. I thought, I've got another five weeks of training. Five weeks with Peter pushing me, but it's flew. Absolutely flew. Everybody talks about making weight and how you do it. You're very tall at this weight, mm. but um, stopping and holding at a weight and then coming back down again, what, what's been tricky about that or has it not been too bad? Um, uh, look, I, I just, uh, I'm grateful for my GB days. We were never allowed to go above a certain weight. So I've always just been like that my whole career. I'm not one to pile on the pounds anyway after a fight. So it, the weight thing was never and will never be an issue for me. Mentally, are you in the same space that you were before? If you don't mind me saying, that's the most confident that I've ever seen you on any fight week, interview wise, you know, you said all the right mm. things and I, I believed them, you know. Um, how do you feel this time around? You, have you managed to get yourself in that, that similar space again? Yeah, definitely. The plus from this is that I remember about two weeks after the fight, there was another show, like another boxing show on. I was watching it and I thought, you know, I would have boxed two weeks ago and it would have all been forgotten about and this, everyone's talking about this show now. So the only good thing about this is I get to relive this whole week again. This, this whole fight week because time waits for no one and before you know it, it'll be Monday and then that, this show's gone, been and gone and it's something else. On the show itself, um, I think first time round they had sold 14,000 tickets and everybody was over the moon with that and it was viewed as a real success. I think this time it is officially sold out uh, last few tickets. It shows that the interest hasn't waned, that people that bought mm. tickets first time round have come back and even more than that. It is history in the making. You've been asked this a million times, but to be part of this, um, is it still sort of pinch yourself? Amazing. For that two women have sold out the O2. Most men can't do that. Um, four or five years ago, it was a spectacle to see a woman on a bill. Like I said, two women have sold out the O2. I mean, you look at your debut with the exactly. cutting of the wristbands and exactly. see you later, and I don't think, mm. think we were the only people that filmed it. And it... The only people there? <laughs> yeah, and we didn't pay for our tickets. But yeah. in terms of the journey, it has been some journey. Do you look back on it now, and yeah, there's been ups and downs, and like you say, sometimes up the bill, sometimes down the bill, but it feels like that journey has brought us to this point, and it feels like this is the right time for this sort of card. 100%. 100%. I always, I've spoke about in the past, I got offered this Clarissa Shields fight about four years ago and I remember Peter saying, do you know, take it, if you want I'll stand by you but I advise you just to leave it, we'll build it up properly and you know, you'll be paid well and we'll make it into something big and it doesn't get much bigger than this. I wonder even then if you thought it would get this big? No, not at all, not at all. Well it's a testament to you both. Um... Can I talk about the story that you just told off camera? Um, you know, you, you don't do much on social media and when you do it hits, <laughs> but your opponent's taken aim at Peter Fury. Yeah. Um, what was your take on that? I just, just ignorance, absolute ignorance. And that was said a month ago in the press conference and you went back home, sat and s s spewed over that. It's when all being, you've been going over on it, you went on whatever you've been on, looked at dates, Venues, like, have you got nothing better to do? We were laughing about it this morning, having breakfast, and I said to Peter's wife, oh, you might have to get involved here. She's starting on your Peter. I always think, like, in terms of poking bears, I wouldn't poke Peter Fury, <laughs> no, but... Not at all. Not at all. She's, uh, she's playing a risky game there. Just finally, we're, we're planning on, regardless of what happens in any of the fights, we're asking everybody that sits there, there'll be a whole new set of eyes watching this on Saturday night and it'll inspire a whole generation. Um, if I put it to you, what, what did boxing do for Savannah Marshall? What did boxing do for you personally? What would you say? It's, it's changed my life. Boxing has taken me all over the world. I've been to countries I would never, I didn't even know existed. Um, it's given me experiences, I've made friends, it's made me grow as a person. Um, and it's, it's made me financially stable. There will be young girls that come to the fight on Saturday night, be their first ever time, and they might think about going to a boxing gym, but they might not just have that confidence. What would you say to, to young girls that are umming and ahhing, you know, there's still this stigma that it's a male-dominated sport, regardless of, you know, the, the hype and the uh, attention that we've got on Saturday night. There will still be that, 
um, that poor attitude and there might be a young girl that's just not sure what would you say to, to them? I was that girl who looked up to Tasha Jonas, Nicola Adams and their commentating on Saturday on my fight um, I was just the quiet little girl in the gym who loved nothing more than boxing hated everything else that come, come with it but I just loved getting in there, loved sparring and that's what took over eventually, the love of the game.